it's uh, Pascal's turn to explain you uh, something that he explained to me a few years back, and I kind of understood, to be honest. You need drug. Huh? You need drug to understand. Uh, yeah. I mean, if anyone feels uh, sick from all the spinning stuff, uh, tell us so we can move on on the next slide. But uh, it, it is actually pretty interesting, and I think uh, maybe we should go to the other one. Or if you want to go, if do you want to go back to the one with well, the spinning uh, stuff? Do you, do you, can you go back? Do okay. you know who is Mandelbro? No, uh, yeah, we do, but no. Okay, so it's a mathematician. No, no, Fibonacci is a, is, is another mathematician. Uh, but we're gonna speak about him actually next week. Uh, no, Mandelbro, he has interesting uh, work, and uh, one of the one which is more interesting is called uh, fractal. So. Let me put it this way. Uh, if I tell you that the border of Bulgaria is uh, billions and billions and billions of kilometers, will you believe me or are you going to tell me you're stupid, just go on Wikipedia and you're going to see that actually it's a few thousand kilometers? If I tell you that the, the border of Bulgaria it's, it's 50 billion kilometers, do you believe me or not? Because you're smart. But the other one, you don't, usually don't believe me. No, but, but OK, why? Uh, how can I explain it? OK, as example, if I want to look at the border of this uh, object, I will measure maybe 40 centimeters here, and uh, maybe, uh, uh, let's say, 40 also. So I know that it's 80 centimeters. But actually, it's a bit more, because here there is an angle. So if I go closer, I can see that this is 40 centimeters, but this actually there is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 40. So actually, it's uh, 48. But if I use a microscope, I will see that actually what I'm touching is not flat. You know, there is a lot of hole. So I will measure every, the depth of every holes. And by doing that with a very tiny microscope and a tiny roller, I can go infinitely, infinitely, infinitely. This is why it's funny to say with this kind of uh, thing that you can't know exactly what is the size of everything. The size of everything is always infinite because the lower you go and the more you can measure. And uh, there was a famous example, what is the size of UK border or what is the size of, of, of a beach? So if you look from very far, you see the beach straight. So you measure, it's like, 10 kilometers, but when you are on the floor, you know the beach is going like that, so you have to measure everything. So this is why it's infinite. How it's connected to trading? So this is fractal. So I, I know it's going super fast, uh, but if you notice, actually, it's always the same shapes, repeating and repeating and repeating. So the best example, actually, is to take a, a vegetable, which is called, it's a cauliflower. Uh, so what is the shape of this uh, vegetable? Is it a square? Is it a pyramid? It's a pyramid. Bravo. So there is one pyramid. OK, now let's look at one face of this pyramid. And let's zoom. What we can see? Pyramid. And if you see, this face is done by what? Pyramid. And if you see, what is done again? Pyramid. Pyramid inside pyramid inside pyramid inside pyramid. This you can find it in uh, any shop, so just have fun tonight. Uh, if you have kids, ask them to spot how many pyramids uh, they see. So how it's connected to trading. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but that will probably keep them busy for like a few months. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the point with trading? So this, as Ilian has told you, according to Do, it's a primary trend. You have the high number one, the high number three, the high number five. They are all higher and higher. But inside this single trend, you have actually smaller trends. You have here a trend going up, a high going high going high, and then you have a downtrend, a low going lower, and then again high going high going high, and so on and so on. And, okay, we will not lose our time, but here you have uh, uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, uptrend. So it's, the market is fractal because there is always a trend inside another trend inside another trend. 
So this is very, 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 very important. Because if you want to follow a down trend, let's say that you see the market going down, and you say, wow, wow, it's time to sell because it's going down. Or for the Bitcoin, every time you see the Bitcoin going a bit up, you want to buy because you want to believe it goes back to 20,000. But the problem is that you, you don't see the full picture. You're just here. You just see what is happening here. But if you go a bit, uh, you know, you take uh, more high, you will see that actually this uh, downtrend, it's inside a big uptrend. So you shouldn't maybe focus on things going down, but you should see this downtrend as, okay, it's a downtrend inside an uptrend. So I will try to analyze where this downtrend can stop. So like that, I can tell to my traders that it will be time to buy or this kind of thing. So remember that every time you see a movement, it's a movement for you. But if you, if you go a bit behind, you're going to see that this tiny movement is inside a, a more global movement. This is why at the beginning of the lesson I told you, always open one, two, or three charts. Because you, you, you can't have only one chart. You don't know what is uh, you know, the big vision. So this, and I will tell you how I analyze top and bottom. Because there is, you know, when we look at those charts, uh, we can say, OK, but why this is a top and why this is not a top? Why this is not a bottom and why this is a bottom? So if uh, Varro would have been here, maybe you use the same technique, he would have told you that uh, he recognized top and bottom by analyzing every time free candle. So the technique of Valo is called uh, zigzag. Uh, so you look at one bottom, two bottom, and three bottom. And if the bottom in the middle is between uh, the two others, then for him it's, uh, it's a bottom. And he used the same technique for the top. So for Valo, this will be a top because it's higher than the two top uh, you know, between them. Here for him it will be a bottom and so on and so on. I, I don't know if you use the same uh, Almost. OK, me, I'm using another one. Um, I'm using this one. So uh, m remember that it's easy to look at a chart after it happened. So it's easy to say when we are here that this was an uptrend. But when you are here, it's hard to say it is an uptrend. So think about this. It's always easy to say, oh, in the past, this was an uptrend. So how me, I'm, I'm recognizing top and bottom. I'm always waiting an uptrend on a, on a one hour time frame, and then a downtrend. And next week, I will uh, teach you the tools that I'm using to recognize uptrend and downtrend. And every time this downtrend happen, I have one information. I know that this uptrend has finished. I mean, when I'm here, I don't know when my downtrend will finish because I can't predict the future, but I know that this uptrend is finished. So I, I mean that I know that the point number five, it's a top. So for me, a top, it's the point between two uh, trends on a lower time frame. So if I'm, I'm looking at a four hour chart to know what are my top and what are my bottom, I always open a 30 minute chart and I'm analyzing the trends on the 30 minutes. And the points between the two trends, it's a top. In the same way, the points between uh, the point between uh, an up, a downtrend and an uptrend here, it's always a bottom. And then I just apply the theory of Do. So if I'm uh, here, in, the, in here, I know that I'm, I am inside an uptrend because I know that the point number five are higher and higher and the point number three as well. Uh, so here you can see the main trend, and here you can see the uh, medium uh, trend, and so you have the high and the low. And this is, so I'm using always two uh, time frames to recognize top and bottom. And I prefer this strategy for one reason. Uh, it's not because it's the best. Actually, the best is always instinct or maybe what Valo or Elian are using. But uh, when I started to teach trading, it was seven years ago, I got one issue. Uh, for, 10, uh, uh, for 10 students, it was super hard to have 10 times the same top and bottom. Because if you, if you look at, uh, okay. okay, if you look at this chart, and if I give one methodology uh, using a candlestick to recognize uh, 
top and bottom, if I have 10 students, I have 10 ans different answers. So it's, it's impossible to teach to people if everybody is different. So I came up with this idea because after, after when a trend is done, everybody has seen the same, especially if we use tools that uh, we're going to show you next week. So 90% of the students, when we are here, they knew that this is an uptrend and this is a downtrend. So we all have the same point, so we end up to have all the same uh, top and bottom. And basically, I kept it, and now this is how I spot top and bottom. So I'm always using two, uh, um, two time frames. Um, so you have the, this is an explanation of how I'm doing. So I'm looking at my 30 minutes chart. I recognize an uptrend. I draw a line. And if this line is broken, I have a downtrend. Then I draw another line. And so I have a top. I don't know where is my bottom. But as soon as this trend is broken, ah, now I know that this is my bottom. It's, 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 it, we don't need to know in real time where is the top and the bottom. It's just important to know where are the top and the bottom, and that's all. It can happen a bit after. You want to say something? Yeah. Ah, sorry. So this is how you have to see markets. Okay? If you have to remember only one thing tonight, just this. You need two charts, a long-term one in blue and a short-term one in red, so four hours, 30 minutes, you know, the period I teach you at the beginning, and try to cut uh, small trends to have a bigger vision. And what you can notice also is that every uptrend is bigger than every downtrend. Okay? Mind this information because it's important, of course. When you have a downtrend inside an uptrend, it's called a correction. When you have an uptrend, small uptrend, inside a big uptrend, it's called an impulsion. Mm, that's all. Psychology? Uh, so we are at the very end. Uh, no, I think uh, I won't be needing it. I, this was, again, value's part, so we are going to have to do it like the two of us. Uh, but the, for last, we saved a little bit to talk about support and resistance levels. Or I prefer not to call them levels, I'll tell you why, uh, but to call them areas. And what do they represent? So basically, support and resistance is an area from where the price has a certain reaction. But this area cannot be defined uh, mathematically. Uh, it is more of a psychological level. So, for example, it, we have 5 million people watching the same chart, and 3 million or 4 million of them decide that, okay, so here in the past, uh, we had a reverse in the price movement. So, uh, we are getting close to that point again. So, this is my psychological resistance level. And since more people think that, than uh, the rest, for example, four million think that, and one million think, okay, this is not a level at all, the price will continue go, going uh, up, for example. The price actually goes down and reverses just because the bigger percentage of participants on the market believe that it should reverse there, based on their psychological views for the market. So, support and resistance areas are psychological levels, they cannot be defined by any formula or mathematical approach or like, or whatever else. Uh, so Valu was about to speak uh, and actually show you different examples of support and resistance levels. Uh, we, a few words about round, rounding numbers, I think you said about them. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, okay. For example, you can see here. Uh, no, no, no. Thank you. We had a huge move up, then a small correction, which ended here, and the new move uh, happened. So, uh, let's say we are somewhere where Pascal is pointing at the moment on the market. And what most people think? Okay, we had a bounce from here. The price uh, bounced from this price uh, level or more. Uh, exact price area uh, because it's very important to remember uh, I did this mistake as a beginner when I started and a lot of people does it they think that 
support and resistance are just levels. So for example, 1.15 price. But it's not like that. And if you, uh, for example, uh, draw that level at a, just one price, 115, the price here might go a little bit deeper and then to reverse. But that doesn't mean that this level is broken and it didn't work. That is why it is, not, it is not just a level, it's an area. So you have to look at it as an area and define it as such. So back to the example, if we are there on the market, uh, most traders will look at that market and based on the history and especially on that uh, reverse or bounce, uh, however you like to call it, they will expect the same there. And just because they expect the same there, most of the times when uh, the bigger percentage of the market participants believe that, it will happen. Now, you don't know uh, if the bigger percentage believes that it, the price will bounce from there and continue moving up. Uh, that's why you need to use uh, other tools or uh, confirmations that actually this area has held uh, the impact of the price and it's ready to go up. So the bigger percentage thinks and uh, believes and reacts to that level. It's basically the same for uh, resistance. Uh, resistance is usually uh, on the top. I forgot to mention that the support is usually uh, at the bottom. So the price is coming from, uh, up, from the up and going down, hitting that level and continuing up. It's the reverse for resistance. The price is uh, coming from down, going up and reacting to that level. And there actually we have a break of that level as well. So here, the bigger percentage of people uh, that participate in the market or investors believed in that level. But now here, they didn't. The bigger percentage believed that this level does not exist uh, al already in the psychology of the other traders. That's why the price continued up and broke that level. It's, it's called a memory of the price and it's, I think, super logic. I mean, if you do something uh, and it hurts you, you expect that if you do the same thing, it will hurt you again. So imagine if you have bought here and you're super happy because you win money. And then ah, it goes down and now you are losing money. What is the first thing you're gonna think? Fuck, why I didn't sell here? So now it will be in your mind and it will be printed in your, in your brain. So what will happen when you go back to this same level? You are like, oh, not twice, I will sell. Okay, now think that millions of people think the same. And this is why this is happening. That's all. Rounding numbers. Uh, if you want, you can, okay, uh, so since you mentioned them uh, previously. So, so it's psychological, okay? It's, it's just psychology. So another thing about psychology, human psychology, people care about round numbers. It's absolutely stupid, but it's happened. So uh, when you reach a round number, so this is a stock, when you go to 130, people are like, whoa, if you are at 131, nobody cares. But if you are at 130 or 50 or 200, people make a big thing about it. This is why, as I'm Paul, I, I speak a lot of Bitcoin, but when Bitcoin breaks the 10,000, it, it market went crazy because 10,000. The, the fact is not that one Bitcoin worth 10,000. This is not that, that important. No, it's just a number, 10,000. It happened the same thing when it broke 5,000 or 1,000. When the Bitcoin broke a, a 5 pound, a 5 one for free, nobody cares. But when 5,000 has been reached, you had a bunch of articles. When 10,000 has been broken, you had the TV spoken about it. So it's important for people, round number. And for the Bitcoin, I think, uh, as an example also, that is why the price dropped heavily from the 2,000, uh, 20,000 mark. Yeah, it, on some exchanges it moved past it, but most exchanges didn't move past uh, the uh, 2,000 mark, so people just started selling from there. I mean, there are other factors, of course, but maybe this was uh, one of the factors that affected the price. So, another example on the Forex now. It's Euro dollar, it's an old chart. Uh, uh, so here you have all the rounding numbers with 500, I mean, a difference of 0 0.05. It's called 500 pips. 
And you can see that markets almost respect uh, those lines. And you can even don't do any kind of analysis and just use those lines to make analysis. It will be stupid, but still. Um, uh, on that chart, actually, if the, this Sage 4 chart, right? It's daily, I think, or weekly. Ah, okay. Then. But it's very long. I mean, no, the, yeah, the, I mean, because you said almost respected, but it almost respected it on daily, but on weekly it respected it. The no, candle no. didn't go below that level. So when you analyze uh, market, mind uh, round, rounding numbers. Uh, then what is important for humans also, it's a um, um, thing in your life, you know, like period. So as example, this is the highest point of the year, and this is the lowest point of the year. Every time the market goes back to the lowest point of the year or to the highest point of the year, you can expect a reaction. Again, it's normal. I mean, just logic things. This is the highest point, I think, of the month or something. Market has memory. This level has been used once. And here you don't see, but actually it broke it. When it goes down, it bounces and it goes up. It's when this level, you don't see, but it, 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 there was a reaction here, and it has, the market has reacted here, here, here. As you can see, actually, market has memory. So it's very important to draw those levels because it can't help you to predict, but it can help you to prepare. Like when you see a big drop, when you know that this level has been uh, touched a lot of time, Maybe it will be touch and maybe very be reaction, maybe no, we don't know, but you know, you, you need to prepare it. So mind that a very strong support and resistance has a lot of memory and can be touched several times. And also that, uh, just to add that a broken resistance turns into a support later yeah. and a broken support turns into a resistance. So this memory is basically applied, although the level has changed. It's not a resistance anymore, but it's a support. But still, the memory uh, stays on, and uh, people continue looking at that price uh, area, not level. Um, this is called a double top. Well, it's it just when the market touch two times in a very short time uh, a resistance. That's all, nothing more. But as you see, it makes an M. When you see an M in the market, it probably means that the uptrend is slowing down, or when it's a W, it means that the downtrend is slowing down. Here, for example, you have the downtrend, which is slowing down. And I think it's the last slide, because yeah, it's, it's late. Uh, we yeah, have it's getting late. I don't know what time is it. What is important with support and resistance? Uh, here, in green and uh, red, it's uh, trends that I will teach you next week how to spot them with a Bollinger Band. And there is something very interesting with uh, support and resistance. This downtrend has been stopped here. So now let's imagine that you are a, traders, a trader and you want to trade this downtrend. You don't know how long this downtrend might uh, last. You don't know where it can go, but what you know is that the last time we were here, the downtrend has stopped. So you can expect that your downtrend can last until here. So it means that if someone wants to sell here, he might not be stupid, but he might make a big mistake because there is a big probability that the story repeats itself. So you don't sell when you think that you are at the end of the movement. Remember when I asked you what is the difference between all those shooting or morning star? One was very late. So as example, if here you would have had a, 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 a shooting star, don't trade it because we are too uh, close to maybe the end. Same here. This downtrend short stopped here. And as you can see, they, there was a W. Same for uptrend. This uptrend stopped here. This one stopped here. This one, ah, I don't know. I know because it doesn't work every time. If not, it's too easy. Uh, so sometimes markets are bullshit, and uh, you think that you, you finally understood something, and then he tells you, <laughs> no, no. And this is why it's important risk management, because you don't win every time. Actually, if you win 50 or 60% of the time, it's, it's already super good. 
so I just wanted to, to, to finish by that, that uh, support and resistance means the way I see it, it's price that ends trend. And if you have uh, successfully remembered everything, you will know that if this is a four hour, this is a bottom in daily. Another bottom, another bottom. So in daily, we have like a W, because remember for me, a bottom is, a, is a, the middle point between a downtrend and an uptrend, and, and this is a top, this is a top, and this is a top. And you have the square, and you have all the candle, and so on. I know it was a lot of information uh, tonight. Uh, I told you that usually we do a lesson in uh, 15 or 16 uh, days, and here we, we do it in five days. So we can't go over everything, we can't take the time that we want for explaining everything, but you have a global overview and, and uh, maybe we can conclude like wh what the things you want them to, to remember the most uh, about uh, analysis, I mean, what we have seen today. Uh, support and resistance, for sure, uh, defining the trend and uh, you might or might not use the candle formations, uh, but maybe it's your thing. I use it from time to time, but I use support and resistances all the time. So for me, that, that is one of the most important things to remember. And also the uh, fractals you spoke about. I mean, that way you can define uh, where a certain small uh, downtrend, for example, inside of a huge uptrend on a higher time frame will end, so uh, attach the support and resistance to that, and you have a mix that can give you uh, very good uh, s spots where to enter on the market and also where to get out. And yeah, we advise you to just open a chart, that's all, and, and try to, to remember what we have said. Try to do what I have told you, you know, the, the, the table. Very important because we're going to speak again about this table uh, in two weeks. Uh, and uh, try, yes, to, to look at support, to look at candlestick, to try to look at shapes and so on. Then, uh, if you go to uh, the YouTube channel of gmtrading.bg, you will see video of uh, Valo and of Ilian uh, making plan, analysis, trade. So those two guys are making money. Uh, they trade in a different way, they trade different markets, they have different strategy, and this is just theory. If you really want to see in a real condition, you just go to the YouTube channel, it's still under the radar, we, still st we, st we start to have some views and some followers, you have an English version and a Bulgarian version, and uh, you can follow them. You can't follow me because uh, you will not understand what I'm saying since I'm doing my videos in French, uh, on the French channel. But on the BG channel, you have those two great guys. And, uh, and that's all. So if you have questions uh, now, or you can come to see us after, but you can show it them now. No, it's too late. You're too tired. Your brain is devastated. Yeah. Uh, I think you're tired as well, and I'm I mean, tired it's, it's as well. Okay. And no questions? Okay, so thank you to have came, and uh, next time it's uh, next Wednesday, and we're gonna study Bollinger Band and... Uh, uh, a few other indicators. Yeah, moving actually. average, Fibonacci. And, and we're gonna talk about divergences as well. And divergence, Sade. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>